Hey all, and welcome to these 10 tips for Confluence. I decided to put this together after I realized there's a lot of great features that folks don't know about in Confluence. Maybe you've heard of a couple. Um, let me know which ones you have in the comments, and we're going to jump right in. First thing we're going to do is learn about what a blog post is. All right, here we are in Confluence. Most people are familiar with pages, which I see here on my content. However, if I go up to the left, I'll see a blogs option. I use blogs as a point in time, for example, a product update or what happened during the week, something that probably won't change as we go. So I'm not going to make a blog post about, say, a how-to or a policy or a meet the team. Instead, I'll be doing this on a regular basis to update my team on what's going on. All I'll do is click plus, and it's going to look exactly like a page. The only difference, of course, is the blog post title. You can't use templates, but that's okay. For me, this is more freeform about putting in something that occurred recently. If I do need a template, I'll just copy and paste it in to give me a starting point. And you'll see me do this with regular updates that have the same structure. So I'm quickly going to put in a blog post here. I'll have the same options to restrict it, show comments, I can leave it as a draft, but right now I'm just going to publish it. I'll have options to change the location or change the access, and click publish. This shows me the blog post, and if I click back on blogs, I'll see the post right here. Now the neat thing is, Confluence will automatically sort these by time, so it's a great way to see progress over time on what changed. You can come in and edit, share, unwatch, and star. And you can also watch a space for new blog posts. So you might not want to watch for every page, but watching for every blog post is a great way for someone on your team to stay up to date. All right, let's go on to that next tip. The next tip we're going to talk about is access to a page. Up here in the top right, I've got this little lock icon. And if I click it, it's going to show me any restrictions for access. So I'll click the drop down, and there's three basic options. Anyone can see it and edit it. Anyone can see it but only some people can edit, and only certain people can see or edit it. Now, these are all underneath my space permission, so if I can't see the space, I won't be able to interact with the page even if I'm on here, and Confluence will even give you a little alert telling you that. Here, I'm going to restrict this so only I can edit it, and only I can see it. This is a great way if you have some confidential things or something you're not ready to share yet, you can hide it from everyone except yourself. I'll just click Apply. And the only difference is this little red lock icon. So other folks won't even know this page exists. They can't search for it. And if you link it to them, it'll just say, this doesn't exist. All right, on to our next tip. What we have here is a great project update from ChatGPT. There's a lot of good information in here. And looking at this, I can see it's about XYZ system. Um, there's some milestone completions. But it's just a wall of text. It's really hard for me to look at this and get information out of it quickly or even kind of know where I'm looking. So what I'm going to do is spend just a few minutes formatting it to make it easier for someone to digest or to look through. I'll do things like bold specific areas. So I might call out these sections with just bold text. And right away, I have kind of sections that someone could easily read. I might also add things like numbering if I need to to provide a little bit of an indent. I have a conclusion section at the bottom, so I may call this out with something like a header. And I may call it the top here with developments. So here we can see some quick formatting, even just simply bolding and adding headers and numbers, makes this page a little bit easier to read. So when someone finds it, it'll be easier for them to use, and they'll have less frustration trying to find things in my knowledge base. All right, let's pop over to the next tip. I briefly mentioned this in the prior tip about formatting, but headers are your friend. Confluence doesn't let us change the text size except by headers. So if I go to this drop down, I'll see the different text styles normal text, and then headers one through six. Now I use headers to visually break down what's on a page. In this example, I used it to break out the milestones. In this example, I use it to break out developments. I could also have broken it out a slightly different way and have each development be a different header. Doing it this way will break up the page even more, but also allows me to do some neat things with some macros. For example, I can add in a table of contents that Confluence will automatically create based on my headers. 
Here we can see I quickly have a table of contents that makes this page even easier for folks to use. Again, it's based on these headers, which also break up the page visually, making it easier for someone to read. Even better, when I update or publish this page, the headers can be hyperlinked. So I could send someone directly to this development phase, and they would go right where I want them to on the page. So check it out. Add some headers to your documents to visually break them up to make them easier to read, give you some great features with table of contents, and give you other places to hyperlink right on the page. All right, let's pop over to another tip. If you saw that tip on headers, you'll notice this table of contents macro that I used. Macros are just little programs that can run on your Confluence page, and they can do a lot of interesting things like pull in Jira tickets, display information from another page, mark part of a page as a summary that's hidden except by other macros. To find them, all you have to do is hit the forward slash, and you'll get a list. Or up at the top here, there's a plus sign. Click on that, and you can search through them or scroll down. Now, the macros you have will depend on your environment. What we're seeing here are kind of the vanilla version. But take some moment to explore these, and you're going to find some great tools that make your page even more powerful. All right, let's pop over to another tip. If you're like me, you're in Confluence quite a bit. And if you're like me, you tend to make a lot of pages and view a lot of pages, and maybe you forget which ones you are working on. Uh, Confluence has you covered, though. Up at the top here, there's a recent tab. Click on that. And it's going to remember what you've been on. So there's an all tab, and this just goes back through time where you've been, pages you've worked on. So if you've worked on a page, made an edit, it would be listed here, pages you've created, items you've starred, and we'll touch on starring in another tip, and any drafts you have floating around. This one for me is big because I will constantly start a page and forget where it is. This will keep a running list of them all for you. So check it out. Just pop up to the recent tab open it up and see where you've been. All right, let's pop over to another tip. This tip is about labels. If you go to the bottom of a page, there'll be a little add label section. And if you click it, you can search for existing labels or make a brand new one. In this example, this is a project document, so I might give it a project label. Now I can see there's already one here called project hyphen posters, but if I wanna make a brand new one, I can. Labels are additional information you put on the page now, it's going to help things like search. If someone types in project, this page will show up a little bit further. But labels also interact with different macros. For example, you could build a list of all the pages with project labels. This gives you a lot of powerful tools to more easily manage your pages and find certain content. And all you have to do is spend a few moments adding a label when you create a page. So give it a shot. Look at your pages and see what labels you might want to add to make them even more useful. All right, let's pop over to another tip. There's a lot that goes on in Confluence, and it's hard to keep track of it all, especially in bigger organizations. So one way I do that is by watching a page. Up in the top right, there's this little eyeball icon. And I'm watching this page because I created it, but I can stop watching it by clicking on it. Now, what this will do is it will send me an email update if there's any changes to it. You can watch all the content in a space, this will mean any change will hit your inbox. This might be too much, so I might turn that off. But you can also do things like watch just a blog post in the case of a blog, or watch all the blog posts in a space. This one's very useful if your team uses blogs because you'll get constant updates. Now, if I'm on a page, not a blog, and I go to watch, I'll just get two options, watch the page or watch all content in the space. So check it out. See which pages are useful to you, and then watch them, either by hitting the W key or going up to the menu to get the updates you need. All right, let's pop over to another tip. We can watch pages, but we can also star them. Watching will automatically send us updates, but starring puts them on a favorite list within Confluence. So I've starred this page in the top right, and I can just click the star to check it or uncheck it. But then if I go up to Recent, I have a whole menu showing me the starred pages. I use this to keep track of documents I'm constantly losing or ones that I think change a lot that I want to revisit frequently. But it's a great way to keep track of any page, blog, or other item in Confluence that you're going to want to visit regularly. All right, here's our last tip. We're going to look at page history. So here I have a page that looks like it might be missing information or I want to know what happened to it. I can click on the three dots menu in the top right and go down to page history. This will show me a list of every change made to the page. I can see the current page and when it was published. 
I can click on old versions to see what it looked like in the past. This is an older version. I can compare it with the current one to see what is different, and this will show me something has been removed. I can even go back, and if I want to, restore prior versions. So if someone made a mistake, I can click this button to restore the page to how it used to be. I'll add a comment saying why I did this, and now the page will be restored to where it was. This is a great way to keep track of what's changed on a page, but also if you make a big whoopsie, it's a great way to fix the mistake. All right, and there you go. That is 10 tips for Confluence. I hope you enjoyed these. Please make sure you take a second to like and subscribe and leave any questions you have down in the comments. Are there other tips that you use? Are there some you think I should cover? Let me know down there and I'll be happy to engage. Thanks again, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.